It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limwalker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, and Twisted Mind Bow Strings. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal Podcast, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in a warm cabin tonight with Dan DeFall, who is finished finishing up finishing sharing. up the shares, and hopefully our guest is able to find that feed on our page and has shared it as well. So we got nine people in right already, so they're All starting right. to pop in quickly. But uh, you know, I, I'm just going to go ahead. Let's just jump right into this. You know, there's been a lot of talk here in the last year on CWD, and uh, Dan, last night you had the opportunity online to talk with Jay Gregory and. Uh, Actually, we've got him on the show tonight. So, uh, Jay, are you still there with us? Can you hear us? I'm here. Hey, hey, welcome to the show. Appreciate you on short notice getting on with us and talking about CWD tonight. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, inviting me. Oh, you know what? I I felt kind of bad because you were on a boat, you told me, after we got into our conversation. I'm like, oh, he's on a boat in Florida. (laughs) And I'm I'm, I'm, I'm like, (laughs) ah. Well, we're going to need a boat here soon. Won't be quite as warm as Florida, but hopefully we'll be on a boat here soon. So, so uh, Jay, you're down in Lake Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Um, I thought you were a northern guy here in the Midwest. I am. I'm. I live in Iowa, but um, I guess maybe I've just gotten smarter over the years. Whenever it gets really cold and nasty, I'm finally starting to. I think I'm getting old enough. My bones need warm, warm air. So uh, I've been down here this winter, and I'm actually looking forward to going back. It won't be long. Of course, turkey season right around the. Right around the corner, and we're going to start. Uh, we'll start up. We're actually going to start here in Florida. Wyatt's coming down to join me this week, and and Whitley, and uh, we're going to shoot some Osceola birds. We hope, and then it'll be back up to back up north and start on turkey season up there. And hopefully, the snow will melt. Maybe we can find some sheds. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like a good plan to me. <laughs> well, okay. So when you come back, bring the warm. Bring right. the send it north. <laughs> Well, I hope to be in Indiana this coming weekend working on some property down there. And then after that, we're going to turn our attention right into turkeys up here uh, hunting easterns in Michigan. But, uh, you know, the reason we got you on tonight, it, you know, everybody knows you're on Facebook quite a bit. And you're very outspoken. And thank you very much for being so on CWD and fighting the fight for, for us hunters, you know, and, and getting that information out. So um, speaking on that, now you you hunt in Minnesota, am I right? I do not, but I have um, I have some staff people, and uh, you know I know several people from Minnesota. So okay. I, it's you know, and it's obviously not that far from me. And it's it's funny how you know every you know deer hunters everywhere we're all like family. So you you talk to people from all over the place, whether it be you know Illinois, Kansas, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know New York, wherever. So I kind of hear it from about everyone. Right. Well, I I remember here recently, I say probably in the last six months or so, I seen a post is probably right before Christmas, actually, uh, where Minnesota was coming out with their their new action plan. And you were very outspoken about that. Um, You talk a little bit about what they're trying to do. Well, what they had done was they had uh, in this hot zone that they have, they had basically um, they had made it to where. They had taken away some of the regulations. They let you use a rifle. This was a special landowner hunt, I guess is what they call it. But it basically anybody from anywhere could come to Minnesota. There was no cost for tags. Bring your rifle, which you can't even hunt with a rifle during the gun season, from what I understand in these areas. And you could shoot as long as you could get permission from a landowner. You could go in there and kill as many deer, bucks, does, whatever as you want to. And it just seemed... You know, and I just I felt bad for the landowners in that part of the country. I mean, how would you like to, you know, have your neighbor who maybe is, uh, you know, maybe they have no ill intentions at all. But just imagine, you know, uh, an old farmer couple sitting at their kitchen drinking coffee and the door knocks and it's a DNR and they come in there with this with their computer and they give them their five minute assertion about how the zombie deer apocalypse is about to happen. And we need to, you know, we need to sign you up for, you know, to come in here and bait pile your ground and kill all your deer because we don't want, 
you know, Fifi catching it out there in the front yard and your cattle and everything else. And, you know, I, I mean, these are just things that could be going on in this couple's head sitting there. And so it's, it's no surprise that the general public is being scared to death enough when they really aren't educated about it and they don't know. And I feel like that's what's happening is they're getting preyed on. And unfortunately, let's say the neighbor next to him, you know, his whole family's hunted for, you know, for a hundred years and it's a farm that's been in the family forever and they try and manage a farm and they have their groups up and it's, it's a big part of their life and a part of their heritage. And the next thing you know, there's, there's guys from all over the country driving in and sitting on this guy's property and just shooting every deer. And it's just, it's sickening to me. And it, it's, um, it's unfortunate that it, it's, uh, it's something that's truly happening. And then from what I understand is once that is over with, then they're bringing in the sharpshooters once they have this special hunt, which is now over. But I, from what I understand now, the, they're bringing in sharpshooters the month of March to, uh, to devastate whatever wasn't already killed. So I don't know. It's just it's a sad situation. All in the hopes to eradicate it by wiping them out. Yeah, we're going to save the deer by killing the deer. Um, yeah. and, and keep in mind that they're, they're selling this that we're going to wipe out these deer, we're going to kill all these deer when not in, there's not one documented case where it has worked to do this, to actually get rid of CWD. And then the question comes up, well, do you really need to get rid of CWD? There's not even been one documented case of a deer ever dying of CWD. And yet, you know, they're, they're banking on the what ifs and what could happen and, you know, uh, making people think that, that it's possible that it could jump to humans. I, you know, I, I love the, the wording that's usually used is that this is a 100% fatal if a deer gets it. You know, they want you to believe it's 100% fatal when they have no proof of that. I mean, it's just, that's, that's just not a true statement. That's, that's a hypothesis that, you know, if a deer gets it, but um, it, it's just, that's just not true. You know, I've got about 50 questions that just popped in my head off of that statement. <laughs> you know, and, and it's funny that he mentioned that about, about a statement. Right. Uh, I was I was told uh, a friend of mine that called me today about, about matter of fact, Jay, you were actually talked about an article without you knowing about it from a publication. And they used, the, it said you're a naysayer with Ted Nugent. And, you know, they didn't even kind of let you know that they were going to talk about you about it. But, you know, it's just, it's like one of those things. It's like they just throw this out there and it, as fact. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's uh, and it, you know the 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 thing is, it's almost like it's a blueprint because I've had several conversations. Most of them have been online with biologists and game officials, um, and every time you get in a conversation with them, it's like they're reading from a brochure. I don't even need to talk to them. I can ask the question and then I can answer it the way they're going to answer it because I've heard the same answers over and over so many times. And they don't really answer anything. All they do is just basically read a brochure. And unfortunately, it would appear that all these states are starting to follow the same quote unquote brochure or ways of doing things. And it's just jumping from one state to the next. And the only common denominator is, is that there is a lot of money um, that is being transpired. I'll, I, uh, I'll see if I can pull it up here for you. I'll read you real quick um, a piece that I just posted uh, the Chronic Wasting Disease Management Act will authorize $35 million in funding for state and tribal wildlife agencies to take action in response to CWD. It was authorized $25 million in funding for practical research to understand and respond to the disease. That's in Montana. Okay, so we're going to spend all of that. And I can, you know, from what I understand, there's the funding is not to find a, a way to get you know, like Missouri, use a, as an example, they've spent $10 million on testing and eradication. They're not doing anything to try and figure out what they can actually do to help it. All they're doing is just wiping out deer. I believe the number is somewhere around they've killed 30,000 deer this year already. And it, and people need to understand that these prevalent, these prevalence rates are of the deer that they kill, point one tenth of 1% of the deer have CWD. And they can't even prove that the deer are dying from CWD. Now, just let that bounce around in your head for a minute. One-tenth of one percent, and we're going to spend $10 million. Okay, now the next question I always ask these agencies is, who's funding this? Where are you getting the money? They aren't going to tell you that. They, you know, they don't want to answer that question. Though the first thing they always tell me is, you're not a biologist, and I'm not, and you don't know what you're talking about, and maybe I don't. But what I do know is that two and two does not equal seven. And when you tell me that 
one tenth of one percent of deer have CWD, yet you're going to go in and you're going to wipe out areas in the hot zone and you're going to kill these deer and you're going to get all this money, this federal funding or wherever it's coming from with no end game. That makes no sense to me. And that should not make any sense to anybody. And that's why it, I am so passionate about it and why I want people to stand up and I want them to make, ask questions. I want them to fight it. And, and it works because I did, I, I did see in Pennsylvania, there was a group there that went way above and beyond. And uh, got, I think the fellow's name was Matt Johnson. He had con contacted me. I actually did an interview with one of the TV stations up there. And they were just asking questions. As it turns out, there was so much publicity about it that a state representative named, and the only reason I remember this because his last name is the same as mine, I think his name was Jim Gregory, got involved, a Republican, and he put a stop to it. And uh, so, unfortunately, what ended up happening, they stopped the coal in that area, but they just moved to another area. And I think they started again from what I've heard. Uh, but it, it can I mean, people do need to, to ask questions and to look at this thing because it just it just stinks. I don't know how else to put it. It just stinks. Well, that's exactly what you said that ask them one question. Yeah. What's your end game? Explain the end game, and they can never come up with there's it. There's no answer for that. There's no answer for where the money comes from. There, there's, uh, there's no answer for how they're they're going to plan on stopping it. Is it just to stop it, or like you said, Jay, is, is there research going on to try to figure out what's going on, how it's being transmitted? Um, but you know, the the other question I, I've got for you is. They, you know, we talk about the pamphlet that they hand out. The, there's misinformation all across the board. And, and sometimes even us hunters give out misinformation. You know, we get, you know, it's an emotional topic. But do you think, is it more of the, the game agencies or do you think it's more of maybe even the media that, that has uh, a hand in the misinformation? I mean, like the zombie deer that just come out here in the last couple of weeks. My own daughter, who's in her 20s, she asked me, Dad, is this real? And I'm like, come on, you know better than that. But I mean, where do you think that misinformation is coming from? This would just be my opinion. But I think that, well, first of all, how many agencies have you seen that have come out against the quote unquote phrase of zombie deer disease? How many, of, how many agencies have denounced that? And went on, it went on whenever you see these new f news feeds come up on your Facebook of ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, CNN, all of them, and they, they, they put these articles out there. You, I've never seen an agency come out and say, no, wait a second. You know, let's not blow this out of proportion. It's not a zombie apocalypse. You don't ever hear them talk about that. So right. I have to believe that they're probably happy, would be my guess, that, it, that that's the term that's been coined on this. Um, the, the first time that zombie deer from, from what I've been told, the first time that, uh, quotations ever been used called zombie deer was actually done by, by PETA, by an anti-hunting group that was used years ago. That was the first time that was ever used. And it's ironic that that's coming back now and getting used. So I, I did want to touch on one other thing though. You, you said, you know, that nobody's really spending money on, on, on trying to find out about it. There is research out there it, it, that's being privately done. And uh, just to let your viewers know this, there's, there's two genotypes in these deer. Now, and I'm not a biologist, so I'm just passing along inf information, but it's very interesting. There, there is two genotypes, and one of them is actually, uh, uh, it helps deer it, it, to actually fight. Uh, it makes them CWD resistant. So there is a genotype of deer out there. They relate this back to a lot of the scrapies and sheep. Back in the day, whenever all this started, which, you know, if you if you have any, I, I would love for everyone on here to go to my Facebook and I've got I just in fact, I just shared it on the Wild Outdoors Facebook. It is a piece that uh, Keith Warren did on CWD and it's about facts. And it is I just watched it a little while ago again just to watch it, to listen to it again. And there's so much good information there and so many questions. And it just gives you the facts about about CWD, where it come from, where it started, and it kind of dispels some of the myths just by the common sense that is made. And I, I wholeheartedly uh, uh, want to thank Keith for taking the time to do that. There are so few of us in this industry that will even talk about this, which just absolutely blows my mind. I mean, you've got so many big names in this industry. There's 100 TV shows out there, 100 plus. Why everyone is not using their platform to at least – have their view, you know, have their viewers back and, and all these people that 
follow them and and uh, and support them and have for years and years and years. Why not use your platform to at least ask questions? And you know what? If you totally disagree with me and you think CWD is the next, you know, and it's going to wipe our deer out, and we're not. That's fine. But at least stand up and say something, you know, and at least get the conversation out there. So I applaud the people like Ted Nugent and Keith Warren. Greg Miller, uh, and I'm sure there's there's some others that have, uh, Tim Wells has stepped up. Some of these people that have stepped up and said something and actually used their platform to talk about it, I applaud you. But there are so many more of you, and you know who you are. There's some way bigger names out there than I am that really need to to. I feel like, come on, we need your help. Absolutely, and you know, and we've we've been talking about it here for I don't know, Danny, what the last couple of years? Yeah, it, it it bubbles up every month for us. Yeah, it just keeps coming back. But I tell you what, we're bumping up here on our first break, so let's take our first break. We come back, uh, we'll continue the conversation. Maybe we will get a few questions here from some of the people who are watching. So we're gonna step outside. And we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. Still sitting here talking with Jay Gregory down in Florida talking about CW, CWD. Something that we're very passionate about is our white-tailed deer. I mean, really all critters, but I mean, this one really hits home um, for a lot of people. Uh, you know, and, and Jay, in the first segment there, we're talking a little bit about action plans and things like that and the end game. Um, I was recently down in, in Indiana at the, uh, the Deer and Turkey Waterfowl Expo and had an opportunity to sit in with four guys who were part of a, a roundtable. And they told me that Indiana is proposing their action plan to take right after the state of Michigan. Uh, are you familiar with what Michigan's kind of done here in their action plan? Uh, refresh me. I, it, I'm guessing I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much the same as, as all the other states. Basically, you get a hot zone, you quarantine it, uh, you wrap it around with a management zone, and you go in and you, you start taking deer and having testing done. But they're going in and, and they're issuing a lot of tags for those areas. Uh, basically the same thing. It's it's to take the deer numbers down quickly and have them tested. You know, state of Michigan, we tested, what, Dan, 30,000 deer this 30, year? 30,000, yeah. 30,000 deer from hunters. Uh, and we come back with 62 positives. Now that equals 0.01 or 0.02%, just like you said. So yeah. uh, 62 cases. Now, m- majority of those, 45 came out of one county. My question would be, well, if that's their plan, why are they not targeting that county a little heavier and doing more testing? But actually, it was one of the least tested counties. So you know what's amazing amazing to me is that that like a state like Indiana will say, well, we're going to do the same thing as Michigan. Okay, where has that formula that they're going to institute ever worked? Right. So why would you copy it? And so, and so, the kind of basically, that's what we're hearing is that you know the formulas are being copied state by state by state. And like you said, wait a second, the formula isn't working, right? So what it makes a conspiracy theorist think is that if this way that Michigan has done it and Minnesota has done it and now Missouri is doing it, there must be a formula there, perhaps, to get federal funding. And as long as you do it by this blueprint, you'll get federal funding in order to, quote unquote, test and fight the CWD. So is that why they're only using a certain uh, formula and game plan in order to do this? Kind of in- kind of an interesting subject. Now, isn't it, you know, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head as far as I'm concerned, is, is you follow the money train. And, w- and what better way to supply your money coffers is to have government money. Right, exactly. Well, you know, and the other thing is we're, we're, we're losing hunters, you know, re- hunter retention. So people aren't buying as many tags, and that directly funds at least our state, D- DNR. And how do they, they combat that? I think part of it is to get this money coming in to combat, supposedly combat CWD. You know, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the answer is. We, we got something here, though, from Tom Witt. He says, Jimmy Newman is waiting on USDA approval. They are going to put six of each genotype in CWD positive preserves and check the resistance. So that's going back to right what you were talking about, the different genotypes. Right. Yeah. And 
that that makes more sense. I mean, at least it, the thing is, OK, if there's a genotype out there that is uh, that is resistant to CWD, well, does it not make sense to do more testing over a period of time from hunters that have killed deer because they can test the genotypes by just by getting samples of meat. It just doesn't seem like it makes any sense. If you go out there and kill like with Missouri killing 30,000 deer, how do you know you just didn't kill 30,000 deer that, that had the right genotype that as they breed, I've said all along, I think mother nature always takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Well, basically this whole genotype theory kind of supports my position it you know it's it seems as though mother nature will take care of itself and and i'll give you an example that that makes me really think about this south dakota every state deals with everything differently okay south dakota had a and you can watch this on that piece i was telling you about that's on my facebook but they had um i can't remember exactly how many they started with but they had an uh, they put elk into a pinned area and their elk, uh, they ended up testing them. They had a pretty darn high prevalence, like 30% prevalence of these. this elk herd had CWD in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything with it. The problem was the herd kept growing, kept getting so strong that they ended up talked the, uh, I can't remember the name of the forest that was next to it. Mm -hmm. They ended up opening gates and pushing elk, they had so many elk in this enclosure that were CWD positive that weren't dying from CWD, yet their prevalence was so high, they ended up using helicopters and pushing them into the other area. And when they were, when the, the commissions over there were asked about it, they were like, we just don't think CWD is a problem. We've seen it in this enclosure and our elk herd has grown to such high numbers and they're so healthy, you know, we just kicked them out into the wild. You know, they opened them up and put them into a state park. So yeah. it, it, that right there tells me you know, somebody is seeing something different. And that to me is what I think. I think if they just leave everything alone, I know they don't want to hear me say that, but I think if they just leave everything alone, it'll take care of itself. I don't see, I don't see any big die off. These deer have had this since 1967. There's been, that was the first case in a, in a pen, in an enclosure in Colorado. And then from there it spread. And of course we all know what happened in Wisconsin, but if, if this was the deer, uh, uh, the zombie deer apocalypse that everyone claims it's going to be, you know, there's millions of hunters out there that walk around in the woods all the time. Mm -hmm. Lots of landowners that manage their ground. There's video. You know, we all got cameras. Everybody's got a video camera nowadays. Okay. Where are all these dead deer? I can tell you that in 2012 on my 800 acre farm, I couldn't walk out the back door in the summertime and you almost had to have a handkerchief over your face with, with a cologne on it because it stunk so bad because we had EHD and those deer, it wiped us out. Right. And okay. That was EHD. I've, I've never, I mean, yeah, I find a few deer here and there, but you know, they die of natural causes. They die of EHD every year in certain pockets. Where are all these dead deer at? I mean, it's just like, do they think we're that dumb? I mean, and point one, uh, one tenth of one percent of deer got CWD, and we're just going to go into an area like Indiana is talking about and do what Michigan's doing because that's a great way to. It, uh, it's not make any it, sense exactly. I mean, and you, the plus way two equals seven. Period. The way you said it exactly about EHD. It, yeah, you know what? You're right. You know, it, it, you get hit hard, but Mother Nature knows what happened. And she'll, you, Dr. Kroll even mentioned this about Mother Nature will respond and have to do what she has to do to right. bring the deer population right. back. Right. Uh, going back to kind of what you talked about there with the, the elk in the pen, um, you know, the, farm, the farming industry or the, the servant farming industry has really taken a, a heavy blow in this, this whole discussion. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, the, they're, they're beat they're up. Famous. Thing, and they're really the ones that uh, they're taking the beating on this. And in, in my opinion, it's not deservedly so either. Well, do you think that, that according to what you were saying there about the elk, that maybe we need to look to them because we know they do a lot of genetic testing for, for obvious reasons. And they're, they're probably the guys in the forefront of leading some of this stuff. Maybe they've, they've got the they're answer. Spending the money, you know, you think about it. The, these people rely, that is their, that, that's their money train is their deer. They take better care of their deer than anybody does, okay? <laughs> They're going to be the last people. I'll give you another example of, of how states deal with it differently. 
there was a, a high fence operation for whitetails in southern Iowa. And two years ago, they had a positive CWD come up inside that enclosure. The state of Iowa came in and completely wiped out that deer. They killed 230 deer. And they show, and it, this is all on that deal that's on my Facebook, wiped every deer in that pen out, and they put a quarantine on that place for five years with no rep retribution. They just wiped them out. And I, I don't know because I didn't see what the number of other deer were that had CWD, but to me, that's just, that's just a huge waste. I mean, that just makes no sense. And they're getting, they're wanting to be able to do that to private landowners. Um, you know, there, there's groups out there. I mean, they, there's actually been legislation from what I understand where they want to make it to where if they find CWD in your area, they can actually come in, don't even have to get permission from you right now. They do, but they like to not have to get permission and just come in and and wipe them out and i've always said all along you know all these you, you, you think this isn't coming to you you think it isn't going to affect you well you know i happen to own a farm in the hot zone of missouri well what if the dnr gets permission from my neighbor who maybe isn't a big deer hunter doesn't care had that representation when they came in sat down at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee and scared them to death Next thing I know, there's a huge corn pile with snow on the ground with snipers sitting out there with night vision shooting every deer that jumps the fence to eat in their corn pile, just wiping my deer out too. You mm -hmm. know, I, it's, I know that sounds far-fetched, but I get mm -hmm. messages from people all the time that this is actually happening to them as we speak. Absolutely. You know, it, it, it's funny you, you mentioned the fact that they're baiting to get the deer to jump the fence. That's one of the things they tell us not to do is to bait. Yeah. Because that helps spread disease. So they're in turn doing so many fallacies out there about that. They, they want it, you know, they, they've banned deer urine in some states to hunt with, you know, and we all know when you buy a bottle of, of deer urine, it's usually a one ounce or a two ounce bottle. Mm -hmm. they, they say it would take 33,000 gallons of urine deposited in one spot in order for there to be enough prions there to, for you to detect CWD. Absolutely. And then this whole baiting thing. Well, that didn't make a whole lot of sense because I just read something about Michigan today where there's they're actually issuing uh, what is it they're uh, they're issuing sup, sup, the supplemental feed, feed up in the UP. Well, isn't that going to spread CWD? No, <laughs> I don't. But so I, I don't know. It just it seems like it, it just it it kind of changes with whatever the agenda is. It seems it seems that way. Well, that's kind of what happened here in the UP when when they uh, they detected it. Danny, that's right up where you hunt. Yeah, exactly. Very close. And, and they found, did they not find, was it one or they two They found deer? one deer four miles from the Wisconsin border Okay, that tested positive for CWD. So instead of doing what they typically do down here in the lower, they just went with the migration sector of the deer, and they went basically north to south, up and down. Right. And it, it's like, okay. But they're still allowing baiting in the UP. But they're still allowing baiting in the okay. UP. I, I just don't get it. I really don't you get know, it. Based on the whole feeding thing, and you know, that's become a big, a big issue. The state of Kansas should be a horrible deer hunting state. The state of Texas should be laced with CWD and a horrible place to kill a good deer. Both of those states allow baiting. I know there's other ones. Those are just two that I can think of off the top of my head. You don't hear a whole lot about CWD in Kansas right now, and they border the state where this all started. And they feed deer, and you can put minerals out. You can do all of it there. Missouri banned minerals because they thought that deer coming to a salt lick would, you know, their reasoning was that it would uh, spread CWD. Well, what are they going to do about licking branches and scrapes? And, you know, I— Deer are out there 365 days a year. Anyone who deer hunts know that they use social scrapes and social licking branches all year long. It isn't just during the rut. They're out there in a food. With the weather we've had this winter, if a farmer didn't get his beans out and left or somebody had a food plot stand there and you got 200 deer a night eating in there, you think they aren't going to be licking on each other and all over each other? I mean, some of the stuff just seems ridiculous. Yeah. You know, some the ways that they're trying to implement them not catching the zombie disease exactly and that's the thing and you know what Let, let's uh let's continue this after we're, we're getting close to another break so let's get to another break and we'll come back and and we'll talk more about this with jay Greg gregory all right we're gonna step outside we'll be right back after this pse archery has always dominated the speed category now the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience 
Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. Still sitting here in the warm cabin talking CWD. You know what? We, we, we've had two segments with, with Jay on. Jay, where can people go to find more about you and, and what you're all doing? Uh, they're we would love to have them on our uh, webpage. It's just the wild outdoors. Just go there and like us and uh, follow us. And we, we post a lot of stuff. Uh, we post a lot of videos and stuff every day. And, and uh, our YouTube channel is the wild outdoors. And we post all, there's hundreds of hours of video and stuff on there. So those are two great places. You can uh, follow my personal Facebook, which is just Jay Gregory. Um, unfortunately, they only let you have so many friends. So uh, I can't friend everybody that comes on there, but you can certainly follow, and we'd love to have you. So, right. And, and right. you know what? How long have you been doing this? This will be our 28th year. I'm getting old. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> Father time's not kind to us. <laughs> I don't mind being so outspoken. Is I'm just I, I, I'm kind of turning into that guy that I talked about when I was younger. That was like. That old grumpy guy seems like he has an opinion about everything. Well, I guess that's I'm I'm turning into that guy, but I try and I I try not to too much, and maybe I do voice my opinion too much. But when I feel strongly that I do about something like this, I just you know if I offend some people, I'm not intending to offend, but if it offends you, I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel about it. So. Okay, okay. So while, while we're there, let's let's go to the the Jay Gregory of old. Let's go way back a little bit and and. Who got you started in, in this passion? What, what, started, what started this all for you? Probably my grandpa. Uh, I never really had any big hunters in my family, which is odd, you know, looking back on it. My grandpa used to take me fishing, and it started with a BB gun and then with a twenty two and squirrel hunting. And then we, when we lived in Colorado and we moved to Missouri, I, I literally grew up in a town, population 253. I lived on a farm, and, I mean, uh, it was just kind of a way of life. You know, I just— I just loved it. And then the, the whole archery thing that just bit me at a really young age. And I just had no desire to gun hunt after that. I just wanted to do everything with a bow. And, and, uh, um, and then as life goes on, I had an opportunity. I met Mark jury. I started doing some filming on some of their Turkey videos and then went to a deer video. And then I, uh, a local ABC affiliate was looking for a TV show host and I bluffed them in to tell them I could do it. <laughs> uh, and then the next year, the Outdoor Channel came to be, and we sent in a pilot show, and then, you know, here we are today, 28 years later, still doing it. So I, I've been very fortunate. And, and you know, in some ways, um, this industry has been very good to me, and I've had so much support and so many great viewers and, and everything. And, and, and I'm not going to say this is my way of giving back because it, it's I'm selfish about it, too, because I want my kids and their kids to be able to deer hunt and enjoy this stuff. But, you know, I just – I've had so many people contact me and like, help me, you know, like, what can you do to help? They're doing this, they're doing that with this whole CWD and they're, they're putting bait piles across my hand. And I feel helpless too. I mean, and I don't know what to tell these people. And so I guess that that's the only reason why I've just been so vocal about it. I'm just like, well, if nothing else, I give everybody a platform to talk about this and at least let's ask some questions and maybe make them accountable for what they're doing. How, how how do we hold them accountable? I mean, I'm, I'm, we're kind of taking you off the track about your personal side now, but you said that. What do I you think we could do to make make our politicians and our our state game officials accountable and transparent? I, it's hard because I know that some, you know, I think they're so powerful, but I think people in power is in numbers, and if enough people ask this, if enough people call their representatives or state representatives and and email them and say, hey, here's what's happening. I can tell you this for a fact. In Pennsylvania, where it got stopped, the this Jim Gregory mm -hmm. didn't know anything about it. He's a state rep and had no idea that any of this was going on, is what he told them. And then once he saw it, he stopped it. I mean, he literally overnight stopped it. And he said, we need to find a cure, not a cull, which was perfect. And so in that area, their representative in that area cut it off and stopped it. So that would be the only thing I'd say is that, you know, uh, you know, talk to your representatives, talk, was, to you, talk to your local officials, even though they look at you and tell you you're crazy and you're not a biologist and you don't know enough. 
ask the questions, you know, make them answer the questions and, and make them real. I mean, it, it, to me, it's almost like asking those questions and making them answer them. If you make them answer them enough time, maybe, maybe they'll listen to themselves and realize their answers make no sense. Not to a normal human being with, with a little bit of common sense. Their answers make no sense. Well, that's that's a great place to start. You know, I know uh, here in Michigan, I don't know about other states, but here in Michigan, our legislature has a sportsman's caucus. And uh, we've got a couple of uh, congressmen, state congressmen that are actually fighting the fight for us or helping to fight the fight with us. That's, that's, you know, so so get out there and, and, and be vocal. I guess that's the one thing is, is we can, you know, doing things like this, getting getting information out and talking with uh, with other people in the area. But you mentioned that uh, you're, you're, the congressman there in PA didn't even know about it. Um, I, I do. I work at a local TV station here in the area, and we do a, a weekly hunting segment. And the the company uh, that we that sponsors it and actually does the interviews, he hunted in the next county over, has property, and that's a CWD management area. And he didn't even understand what that meant because that that's all taken place in the last two years. So we've got people in the industry, like you said, that really don't even know what's going on. You know, they 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 don't have that information. Yeah, it's. It, it, that's mind-boggling, but it, and and it's it seems like you know, obviously a lot more people are finding out about it now because it's hitting mainstream media to an extent, you know, and uh, you know that's that's the scary part is when mainstream media starts reporting stuff that that really makes no no sense and they're they're basically just fueling the propaganda machine and that that's not a good thing. Well, about two weeks ago we got done with our, our noon news and I, I walked out in the studio. And they just run the story on the zombie deer. And I, I, I got everybody around. And I said, look, okay, this is not true. What you're reporting is not true. It's not factual. And, you know, now, um, well, even in the past, but especially now, I've got a little more rapport with them because I start giving them the facts, you know, saying this is what we're dealing with. This is how it works in Michigan. You know, you, what you're putting out is propaganda for anti-hunting. A lot of it is, like you said, the zombie deer. So... Uh, that's when you've got the opportunity, I think we need all of us. I mean, not just you, not just me and Danny, but everybody who, who buys a hunting license and cares about their heritage needs to start speaking up and, and, and telling the truth and being vocal about it. Absolutely. And I, I just, you know, I've reached out and I've said this before and I've had a couple posts the last couple of days and, and I won't really name any names, but there's over a hundred TV shows out there and you know, there's some big ones and there's some people that have millions of people following them. You know, and have made a great living off this industry. Come on, man, join the fight. You know, use your platform and and get out there and help people. And and you know, we need everybody in on this. This isn't going to just affect a few. This is affecting everybody. You know, and and I, I've said this before. I suppose maybe some of these other people that maybe just don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to say anything about it. I bet whenever one of their neighbors that doesn't like them because they're jealous because they have a TV show allows a DNR to come in and put a corn pile on the other side of the fence and start shooting all their deer they've been managing for years. I bet then they'll, you know, they might, uh, they might see that it could, could affect, you know, everybody. And so I just, I just wish more people would get involved there. And I, and I wish companies would get involved. You know, there's a lot of big companies within our industry uh, I don't really name, I don't want to call anyone out, but I mean, it's just, everyone needs to, needs to get involved in this and, and ask questions and use the platform in order to just be vocal about it. And, you know, and if, if you have a different position on it than what we have right now, that's fine, but at least talk about it. You know, it, it is a problem and it's, becoming a big problem. Well, in debate, that's, I think that's the best way to solve a problem is debate. You've got people on opposite sides. We'll figure out, work together on how to combat the problem because everybody's got ideas. And, right. and, and like you said, I think this hunting industry uh, has, we're, we're a giving people. We, we always contribute to causes, you know, hunting, fishing, the outdoors, whatever it is, we're always giving money back. So why not take some of that, you know, and, and put it into some research and, and start trying to find a cure for this or trying to find out what causes it? You know, you know, they say it's the folded prion, but, you know, that's where the funding is going right now. I know there's a guy out east that's doing some research now on the spongiform encephalopathy, uh, you know, the, the bacterium. And, you know, whether you agree with that or not, at least somebody's trying something different to find the reason for it. And that's what I like to see is people breaking into different areas and trying something different. Absolutely. It, it, anything's better than just going in and wiping out deer. They've already proven that doesn't work. So let's stop with that 
and let's figure out something else. You know, let's sit down, have a round table, figure out, okay, where can we put this, all this money that's getting, uh, that's getting spent on this? How can we better spend it to find an, another way of uh, figuring this problem out? Because going in and wiping out deer herds is not working and it's not very popular. And I think the more people that find out about what's going on, what the prevalences really are, and the fact that, you know, one tenth of one percent of deer have CWD, you know, if it was if it was 50 percent of deer have C CWD and it, I mean, they make it sound like it's 50 percent of deer have CWD and it's going to jump over to humans and these zombie deer are going to break in your house and, and shoot you with their laser eyeballs. And I mean, it just it's ridiculous the direction it's going. It just it, it just it just needs to be talked about in a factual way. I'll tell you what, uh, why don't we go ahead and take our last break. We come back, we save the rest of the time we've got, and we'll kind of wrap things yep. up. So maybe we got some more questions here coming in. Hopefully, I, like I said, there's still a lot of people that are posting uh, comments and things that are just flying by so fast it's hard to read them all. But we're going to step outside, take our last break, and we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSCArchery.com. Welcome back. Uh, Good talk in the commercial breaks. You guys have got to watch the live streams for everybody that's on the podcast. You're missing out. Um, talking with Jay Gregory here again out of Florida. Um, you know, I would kind of ask another uh, little bit of a leading question here. You know, right now we're seeing a lot of the attention being paid here in the Midwest, in the South Central Midwest, you know, like maybe even down to Arkansas. I mean, they've, they've just come up with some cases down there. But this was primarily a western disease when it started and we don't hear a lot about those states being all up in arms and and waving the the red flag saying kill all the the animals whether it's elk uh, mule deer or whitetails why do you think that is i, I don't know uh, it's it's you know cwd was actually found in a pen in colorado in 1967 and then the next thing you know they start you know we they find it in wisconsin well i doubt that a deer got out of that pen and ran to Wisconsin when that happened. I mean, I just, I, I, my personal opinion is that these deer have had seed. There's been a CWD, you know, they, they've been in deer and mm -hmm. they've been in circuits for forever. And they're just now testing for them and finding them. Uh, why the States out there? I mean, obviously Colorado, their elk and deer herd are as strong as they've ever been. All those Western States, you would think that, with it being as bad as they want you to believe it is, I mean, you'd start seeing the only place the deer numbers are down and the hunting numbers are down are in the places like Wisconsin where they went in and just wiped them out. And they're still trying to, you know, they're still trying to come back from that. And so I, I don't know. It, it There again, that's just another question that makes kind of no sense. Well, what, what okay, you mentioned Wisconsin, and, and I heard a gentleman that hunts up in that area uh, – where they've got CWD, especially there on his, his private uh, farm. And what do you say to a guy who says, you know, we're, we're shooting mature bucks up here, and the problem is three out of five of the, of the deer we shoot now are CWD positive. He says, you know, what kind of future do we have? What do you say to somebody that's on the forefront of the battle and, and they're discouraged? I mean, how, how, what do we say to those people, I guess? Well, I mean— I guess my, my biggest question would be, okay, you're, you're killing a deer, you're killing a buck. And if the prevalence is, you know, whatever the prevalence is in that area, they're killed. How do you know that deer would have died of CWD before it would have died of natural causes? Mm -hmm. Right. I guess that's my thing is, you know, yeah, a deer might have CWD. I, I would guess, I don't know this for a fact. I would guess that I've probably eaten several deer that have had CWD. As many deer as I've eaten over the years, as many deer as my family eats. And one of my farms in Missouri is right in the hot zone. So, and they just started testing. So I'm sure I've eaten CWD deer. Am I worried about it? No. Um, so I don't know, you know, if you're in the hot zone in Wisconsin and you've got a nice farm and you're managing it, if you can keep 
you know, as long as you can keep them from coming in and wiping you out, I just don't know that it's that big a deal to worry about. I mean, if you're if you're not walking out the back door and see deer, you know, you know all skin and bones and dying all over the place, are they really going to die a CWD just because they got it? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, that uh, there'll be some people that'll say absolutely is 100% fatal. Well, then there ought to be dead deer laying in a lot of places. I don't ever find them. Well, it's funny you say that. You talk about finding dead deer all over the place. There was an article that just came out. Well, it's the one here in Michigan about uh, they they say there might be a potential of 40% die off of, of the deer herd in the UP because of the weather this year. So now they've, they've instituted the supplemental feeding uh, policy. So we're worried about 40% of the deer dying off, but we're spending millions of dollars when we're getting 0.001% of CWD. I mean, I just, it, it's the two wide extremes and we're worried. Makes, there again, two plus two does equal seven. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's, you know, you're worried about them dying off because of the deep snow. So you're going to open up some supplemental feeding, but whenever the snow is gone, you can't feed because if you feed, it could spread CWD. I, I, it just, it doesn't make, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. And if deer were, you know, if you would think if, if CWD were that harsh on the deer and you had that kind of a winter, wouldn't you think, I mean, over the years, this isn't the first time we've had a harsh winter where you've had die-offs. Um, I don't know. It just seems like Mother Nature takes care of herself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, that's, the, that's the thing about it is, is you, you, you get the natural Mother Nature stuff that's happening already. You get this thrown on top of it, and it, it's just it, it's mind-boggling. Yeah. Well, you know, let's, let's kind of, let's, let's end the show like on, on a little bit happier note. I mean, this is, we can get in the trenches on this and, and actually it can, it can kind of get you depressed, you know, thinking of all the, the possible scenarios that we can go through that we're going to lose our deer, you know, and it, or it makes you angry. You know, it's an emotional topic, but, uh, you know, looking forward, um, you know, just like tonight, having discussion, I think that's, that's a first start. You, you mentioned talking to your local politicians, um, is there anything else that you think we can do? Maybe, maybe there's a way we can form uh, some kind of group or get behind our our wildlife uh, groups. You know, like the NDA or White Tails Unlimited, or you know, even on a bigger scale. You know, uh, the I don't know. I'm just I'm thinking out loud here. I don't know either, and and I, I'm I'm open for any and all suggestions as far as that goes. But it's going to take a lot of people. It's going to take you know, it, it's going to take a big group. It would be great if groups like white tails and white tails unlimited and you know and, and and some of these bigger groups would actually but you don't really hear a whole lot out of them or i haven't but um maybe maybe they're in the works of that of forming a group to get you know everybody together and i think the only thing you do right now is you have to kind of micromanage it from smaller areas just i think you know talk to your state representatives and let them know that you know you're not happy with what's going on or or at least let them know what is going on because right. then some cases, cases they may not even know what's going on. Right. Well, I, I know here locally uh, in Michigan, we've got a group uh, up in the northwestern part of, of the Lower Peninsula called the Northwest 13. Or that area is called the Northwest, Northwest 13. And they've imposed uh, APRs up there. It was a let them go, let them grow group. Lincoln Roan, a friend of ours, who, who kind of got that, that big push started. And they're pushing thirty to 40,000 members now. And they're trying to work with the DNR. Uh, in the state wildlife agencies of, of getting APRs pushed statewide in, in hopes of using that as a tool to entice hunters to shoot more does and manage the herds properly and, and get those prevalence rates down. You know, I mean, if we can do something like that, maybe on a national level, and I guess, and maybe even looking at that, why, why isn't there a, 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 the states aren't even working together. It seems like every, every little piece is doing their own thing and we're not getting anywhere. There's no traction, but if we could get a, a group like Lincoln's, on a, on a bigger scale and push nationally, yep. you know, I think well, it, it makes per, exactly what you said. You, I'll use Kansas and, and Missouri as an example. There's a magic line, which is a state line between the two and they couldn't be any more opposite in Kansas. You can feed, you can put out minerals. Uh, I dare to say Kansas has way better deer hunting than Missouri has from a quality standpoint. Missouri probably has more deer but because of their management practices of having gun season during the rut, they're never going to have the age structure that a state like Kansas or Iowa is going to have where they have the gun season uh, the first week of, of December. Mm-hmm. So you take this magic line and those people over there in Kansas, unless something has changed or is going to change, they aren't talking about CWD. They aren't implementing any of these deals and their deer are just fine. Mm-hmm. Yet over in Missouri, 
I think the number's 30,000. They've killed 30,000 deer in Missouri, and that's all they want to talk about. No baiting, no feed. You can't even put, you can't even put a salt lick out. You know, so I'm like you. Who's right? Who's wrong? Are the people in Kansas that is uh, apparently the the Missouri Department of Conservation must think that the Kansas Parks and Wildlife are a bunch of idiots if they if they think that well they're going to become a problem because their deer are going to you know on the line are going to give our deer CWD and I don't know I I don't know what the answer to that is but it's weird that it's not a nationwide it's by state and everyone is so different you know the difference between South Dakota and in nebraska and some of the other states that touch and now montana's getting into the game you know i i don't know it's a it, it it's it's a it's a good question i i don't know i don't know how you get everybody on the same page yeah that that one's always yeah. buffaloed me as to why people aren't working together instead of opposing each other you know the worst part about the same page deal is like when you got indiana talking about doing the same thing that michigan has done that's been quote unquote so successful when right. it hasn't been successful at all right. so that that blows my mind that takes me back to the theory of there must be a blueprint where you get you know somebody's paying for this right yeah we are <laughs> yeah we are indirectly you know uh whether it's coming from the federal government or on the state and local level it's uh yeah. it's coming out of our pocket but uh yeah. You know. All right. I said I was going to try to turn this into a positive ending here. So uh, looking ahead. Uh, it's the, spring and it's turkey season coming up. It's positive. And it's 85 go. degrees out here where I'm at. That's positive. So. I don't want to hear about 85, man. <laughs> it's it's maybe 35 here right now. But no, it, that's awesome. You know, we talked before the show. You're going to do some turkey hunting down there. Uh, what's on the horizon for you for deer season this year? Speaking of deer, and we're talking about hunting. Well, just... Um, just the same old, same old. Of course, we'll we'll put in for tags uh, for elk out in Wyoming and Montana. Um, we'll see, you know, what happens there. Our our fall kind of sets up on what tags we get lucky enough to draw. So, but even if we don't draw any tags, we'll be in Wyoming for whitetails. We'll be in uh, in Iowa and Missouri for whitetails. Um, and then I have a, you know, I have a, I have a staff that's been with me for a long time. It's not a huge staff, but I have a very good staff, and they're from, you know, different states: Illinois, Minnesota uh kansas so you know meat and potatoes of our show is the whitetails in the midwest and and uh so we'll be looking forward to that as as summer moves on it'll be time to plant food plots and get the cameras out and going and as soon as turkey season's over with we'll be right into that so oh, always looking forward to that and uh yeah hopefully we'll have a good wet summer and the antler growth will be great and cwd will mysteriously vanish and we'll all be happy would right. that be nice that would be awesome <laughs> You know, I, I do have one question. Uh, you know, you do all this hunting, you do all this this this, this turkey hunting, elk, deer. But I got to ask, and we ask everybody that we have on the show that we talk to, um, like, what's your favorite meal? Like, like you're gonna make out of, and how would you cook it? My favorite is easy. That one has got to be deer loin, and I just cut the loins. I use Lowry seasoning sauce on them, or it's Lowry seasoning salt. And I, I prefer to cook them on the grill. I put a slice of Lowry seasoning on it, put a, a slat of butter on it, and then put it on the grill and cook them on the grill. And I like my meat pretty rare. So it just basically melts in your mouth. But that's uh, Skittles, my daughter, I call her Skittles, Whitley. She comes to the house and she's always like, are we going to have deer meat again? <laughs> so we eat a lot of deer meat. Uh, so, But that's, uh, that's probably my favorite. I like all different types of wild meat. It just... As long as the fat gets cut off of them and doesn't get that gamey taste, that's the biggest thing about preparing the meats. Just making sure you get all the get all the fat off of it. I love elk too. Uh, now, unfortunately, the last couple of years I haven't drawn elk tags, so I don't, I'm out of elk meat. But I love elk and I love caribou. Uh, I've had good bear loins before. Um, it's all good. I mean, I love it all. Turkey, wild turkeys, obviously. You know, cut that up and cook it on the grill. That's as good as it gets too. Absolutely. Well, speaking of all the traveling you do, two questions here. Okay. What snack do you have with you on the road, and what are you listening to on the radio? 80s, 80s hair rock. Uh, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a Motley Crue, Cinderella, <laughs> White Snake, Guns N' Roses kind of guy uh, for that. And uh, snack-wise, oh, man, I, don't, I just don't eat very good. I, I'll be the first one to admit uh, I like my snacks. So I eat, uh, <laughs> don't eat very healthy on the road, that's for sure. <laughs> Whatever you can get that's uh, at, at the local gas station on the way. He, exactly. He's uh, a he's a pork rinds kind of guy. There you go. There you go. Yeah. 
There you go. That's awesome. But, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of running up a little bit out of time here. So uh, we're going to wrap up the podcast portion of this and we'll stay on for just a few minutes afterwards if anybody's got any quick questions. But uh, thanks again for spending an hour with us tonight and talking about something that's very dear and important to us and you as well and a lot of people out there. And uh, once again, give everybody a, a quick shout to where they can find uh, all, all of your uh, information at and where they can see some of your work. Just come to the Wild Outdoors Facebook page, like us and follow us there. Or you can go to, if you want to see a, a bunch of our shows and videos and old stuff, new stuff, go to our YouTube channel. It's free. Just subscribe to it. And uh, other than that, um, we will start airing again on the Sportsman's Channel July 1st. And uh Come say hi on the Facebook and Instagram. All right. All right. Well, for some reason, we just lost the video, but we still got the audio portion. So um, we're just going to pop our screen up here. But uh, we're going to wrap up the podcast portion of it, folks. Y'all take care and uh, make sure you get over on Wednesday afternoons or Wednesday evening and check out the YouTube uh, live stream portion of this. So, uh, oh, there he's back on. Okay. But, uh, yeah, check that out. Danny, I have that posted for you, and you can hear all the conversations in between the commercial breaks and all the good stuff. So y'all take care, and we'll be back again next week. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Lambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limwalker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X-Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, and Twisted Mind Bow Strings. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.